Hi, welcome back to Jim Seneca Music. This week, we want to talk about creating a scratch track in GarageBand. Scratch tracks are really helpful when you're doing recording and you have lots of ideas you're going to add on to your initial uh, work. The scratch track serves as a foundation um, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. I know the tempo of my song. I'm going to tap it out here and see what we get. Uh, 75. I'm going to bump that up just to there. 78. I know it's an A minor. I'll go here. Click on the minor. It's in 4-4. Uh, just a word about the input device right now. I'm speaking. In order for you to hear me, I'm using my Go Solo device. That will change later when I start recording the uh, music. But for now, we're going to go ahead and create this project. It will show up like this. Because I mentioned I like to have a drummer, the sound of drums, uh, when I do my scratch track, when I play over it, I'm going to go ahead and choose drummer and we'll create that track. And it shows up like so. Um, I already have tested this and I know this is the particular drummer I want, but let me just take a minute here and to get you to look at all these options. You have a bunch of rock sets. You've got alternative songwriter, which is also very nice when you're experimenting. You're not really sure what you want for drums yet, but you know you need a beat. Songwriter is really helpful. There are more. And then underneath the one I've chosen, pop rock, there are all these different sounds. I've made it pretty simple. I've gone down here and chosen the half pipe, although you have all these beat presets that you can use under this SoCal beat. Uh, now you'll notice just up here that it's gone ahead and done eight measures for me. Well, your song is gonna have more than eight measures. So to stretch that out, it's pretty simple. You just take that and you drag. I'm gonna go with about 32 just to get started here. So boom, there's my 32. Now what this does is you'll hear it uh, later when I play it back. But basically, I've selected at 78 beats per minute a drummer who's going to help me play my scratch track uh, correctly. And that's going to be a nice foundation as I go through my other ideas and I add to this recording. So for now, a um, couple things. I've already chosen my drummer. I really don't need that window anymore. I can go ahead and close that. And this is just more material, more resource to make that choice, so I can close that. The next thing I want to do, of course, is save this. We'll go ahead and call it, do you notice the project one, that little default name is there, courtesy of GarageBand. I'm going to name it He's Alive. We'll go ahead and save. So I'm going to sit right here in this chair this. I've got the mic about 8-10 inches from the 12th fret, but I'm also going to be singing, so I'll probably bump it up just a little bit. But this is basically how I'm going to proceed for, from the next track, for the next track. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I'm going to go ahead and add a track it's going to be a new track. And the reason I chose new track is because this track has different characteristics, right? It's going to be, I'm going to be recording from the microphone I showed you. So I will pick mic or line audio. And I want to listen from input one right here. So I'm going to go like so. Okay. Hi, thanks for hanging out with me today. I've got a free gift for you, so make sure you either click the link in the description or click that little banner in the top of the screen. Okay, I'm going to show you a few more things here I've set up in GarageBand. We're back in GarageBand and you'll notice I've added an audio track. This is actually where I'll play guitar and sing. It's a little confusing. You see input, however, 
right now I should probably explain to you that what I've really got going on is um, I'm still using input device go solo um, when I, if I turn that off the only way you'd be able to hear me is in the other microphone which is about mm, six eight feet away wouldn't be very good but I just wanted to show you this real quick what we've got here um, the other thing I had to do and this isn't intuitively obvious the microphone I will be using is a phantom powered mic so this is my duet USB setup and even though I'm not plugged into that right now you hear me through the go solo this duet USB I've got input one uh, set up here I'll show you a picture of that but I've got it at 48 volts that's our phantom powered microphone without this clicked like a so I get and you can probably tell I get no no input at all um, so I have to do that and the mic is on so to speak it's got 48 volts of energy in there uh, that creates a sensitive mic and really good so that takes care of the configuration for the duet uh, 2 Maestro 2 by Apogee now I'm all ready to start recording when <laughs> when I move this input device to the duet USB I had to change it back so you could hear me finish talking but once I start that that will be the setting I use to actually do the recording